Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Cutter One. I'm your host, JJSJ, your resident troublemaker and your resident culture warrior. I hope you are all doing well as we get ready to close out this Tuesday and make our way to the middle of the week. So tomorrow is hump day. Thank the Lord as we move closer and closer to the weekend. All right, let's get right into it. All right, so as you know, today has been all about, there's a recurring theme, right, that I wanted to get across today, right? And I just, I, a bunch of articles I came across. Um, that were all released over the weekend, essentially, all within the same time period. And uh, they sort of, the articles have a recurring theme. And the recurring theme from the articles, if you take them all as a whole, is Warner Brothers, Peter Jackson, original Lord of the Rings trilogies and potential future Lord of the Rings stuff, bad, Rings of Pewter, good. That, that, to sum it up, that's what all of these articles have in common. Right. That is the one recurring theme. And this is goes to what I've been telling you guys for the longest is that you're going to see this play out up until the marketing campaign for season two of Rings of Pewter kicks in. This is what you're going to have. This is this is reaction to Warner Brothers announcement of doing more Lord of the Rings movies. And I told you guys that Amazon was like, oh, shit, because that was like a, a, a warning shot across their bow. OK, and now you're starting to see that now you're starting to see the articles and the shill media sort of sorry that it was a little bit out of focus, um, starting to run interference for for Amazon. So this is the, the final one. Um, let's get right into it, because uh, this one is interesting. And this one is coming to us from the good folks over at Screen Rant. And it says, One good thing, Lord of the Rings new movies give the Rings of Pewter. The Rings of Pewter may not have seemed like the best at first, but future Lord of the Rings movies will certainly help the show's perception. This is by Robert Pittman. And I could already tell I'm not going to agree with Mr. Pittman, so let's get right into it. The legacy of the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Pewter, may not be the best, but the new Lord of the Rings movies do help the show in one big way. The Amazon Prime series was the first live action entry in the franchise since the Hobbit trilogy, following up on the lackluster prequel to Peter Jackson's original movies. Now, the Lord of the Rings franchise is taking another chance with the big screen, inadvertently helping the Rings of Pewter in the process. The Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Pewter, is a prequel to both the Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, taking place thousands of years before J.R.R. Tolkien's original series. The show explores the world and politics of Middle-earth leading up to the creation of Sauron's Ring, which kicks off the events of Peter Jackson's movie trilogies. The Rings of Pewter was pretty controversial both before and after its release, but now that the new movies are causing the dust to settle, things are looking a lot better for the Amazon Prime show. New Lord of the Rings movies could help the Rings of Pewter's perception. Um, it was recently announced that, n that new movies based on the Lord of the Rings are in development, a development many fans are unenthusiastic about. Although the original movies were great, every subsequent installment in the franchise has been met with mixed to poor reception, and the upcoming movies may well be no exception. Luckily, if the films are bad, they could take attention away from the Rings of Pewter. After all, the series turned out to be successful in many ways, and taking some heat off the series could, just, could be just what is needed to finally get some appreciation. The reaction to the Hobbit movies was a perfect example of this. Many aspects of the Hobbit trilogy were critically panned on release, with critics and Tolkien fans alike taking issue with the movies. Although they still aren't considered great, public perception of them greatly increased after The Rings of Pewter was released, as the fandom had a new target to trash. Now, rose-tinted glasses are helping the Hobbit's perception, and hopefully the same will happen to The Rings of Pewter after the new movies are released. All right, I'm going to stop right there for a second. Because I'm going to have to say that is an absolute hell no, that is such a bullshit, asinine take that it's not even funny. The reason why The Hobbit doesn't look so bad now that Rings of Power came out 
is because Rings of Power is every single thing that Tolkien fans did not want. The problem is, is that everything that the Hobbit trilogy got wrong, i.e. drifting from the lore, i.e. creating original characters out of nowhere just to fill in sort of, you know, studio mandated requirements and stuff like that. Um, the reliance on special effects, um, a lack of the depth and caring and, and, and um, devotion to creating something good. That's what we got in The Hobbit. And that's why fans didn't like The Hobbit compared to the original Lord of the Rings trilogy, right? The Rings of Power did all of that and is doing all of that in spades. And that is why people hate the Rings of Power more, because you already had a point of reference where you could have learned what not to do, but instead you're doing even more of it, okay, and on a grander scale. And that is why the Rings of Pewter um, is considered such a shit show by anybody with a brain, right? Um, so no, um, yeah, just no. Okay. Anyway, why the Rings of Pewter is better than the new Lord of the Rings movies. Okay, so we know already Screen Rant's take. If you ever wanted to read between the lines and know exactly where an online magazine stood, that simple sentence right there that you guys are looking at, why the Rings of Power is better than the than new Lord of the Rings movies, right there. Because there, there hasn't been, other than Warner Brothers announcing that they're interested in making more movies, nothing else has been said. So the fact that Screen Rant is already saying that the Rings of Bullshit is better than anything that Warner Brothers is going to come out with lets you know exactly where Screen Rant stands. So let, let's continue to read. Even though the new Lord of the Rings movies aren't out yet, it's already likely that the Rings of Pewter is better than they will be. Okay, um, you know, partisan much? The Rings of Pewter expanded Middle-earth's lore. No, it didn't. It completely ignored it. Delving into history that hadn't yet been explored, unless you read the books, the Rings of Pewter told the last major story that the two trilogies hadn't explored yet, meaning that the future films won't feel nearly as tied to the main franchise. Not true. Remember, Warner Brothers is not obligated to not tell the fall of Numenor, to not tell the War of the Last Alliance. They are under no obligation to not do that stuff. And if they, I, I'm hoping that they tell those stories and I'm hoping that they bring Peter Jackson and Fran Walsh and Philippa Boyens in and they work on it and they nail it because that, to me, that will be just the bitch slap that Rings of Pewter needs. Okay. Um, but yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, meaning that the future films won't be nearly as tight to me. You don't know that. You don't know that screen rant. You simply don't. On top of that. A show like The Rings of Pewter is inherently a better way to explore the franchise than a new Lord of the Rings movie. The series is known for its detailed, in-depth lore, something that can only really be explored in long-form content. Are you absolutely shitting me? Are you even watching the same show that the rest of us had to endure? Like, seriously, Screen Rant? I'm sorry. Get your heads out of your ass. Jesus Christ. This is why the original films uh, took place over a trilogy, with each entry being incredibly long on its own. One spin-off movie just isn't enough time to significantly expand the universe, making The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Pewter, already seem better by comparison. Who wrote this show? Robert Pittman. Robert, you don't know your ass from your elbow when it comes to Tolkien, my friend. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And clearly, Screen Rant, thank you for showing your bias, for saying the quiet part out loud. Now we all know when it comes to anything Lord of the Rings related, you are not a reliable source. I'm going to say that again, looking right at the camera to anybody watching this video. If you just saw the Rings, I mean, I'm sorry, Screen Rant, has already determined without there being any whatsoever, any acknowledgement of what e even Warner Brothers' new Lord of the Rings films are about, right? Th there's been nothing other than the announcement that Warner Brothers wants to make more films, 
set in Middle Earth, right? Screen Rant has already said that the Rings of Pewter, the shit show that is the Amazon series, is already better than anything that Warner Brothers is going to make. And that, folks, lets you know exactly where Screen Rant and this author, uh, Robert Pittman, stand, okay? They already are, are wanting to prop up this garbage show and make no mistake, Robert, Screen Rant, it's garbage. Rings of Pewter, as a Tolkien fan, Rings of Pewter is garbage from top to bottom in every conceivable way. And I say that both as a Tolkien fan and I say that both as somebody who has experience doing independent films. Rings of Pewter is garbage in every conceivable way. Just in case, in case my position on it has not been made clear. Okay, so Mr. Pittman and Screen Rant, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Okay, but thank you for all showing us your bias. That's the take. That's the takeaway from this. You've already decided what is a better show before the competition, before game day, you've already decided who's won. Okay, and that lets everybody know, everybody watching this knows that Screen Rant can now no longer be taken seriously when it comes to anything related to Lord of the Rings, to Middle Earth, to the Amazon show, or to the Warner Brothers movies. We know Screen Rant's take and any of its author's takes, particularly Mr. Robert Pittman, cannot be taken seriously because you have already shown your bias. End of discussion. That's all there really is to say about it. And guys, I wanted to end on that one because that one was the most in-your-face one. As you know, all day I've shown a series of videos that all came out within 72 hours of each other. And the recurring theme for each and every one of, these, of those articles that I read um, in all five videos that have come out today, the, the recurring theme was, prop up rings of power we saw that in the first one i did where they said season two is going to answer all these questions that fans have about Celeborn and Celebrion, right and now this one which screen rant has just flat out decided that the rings of pewter is going to be better than any anything warner brothers does regardless end of story they've just already made up their minds right and that's been the recurring theme today is rings of pewter good warner brothers discovery Peter Jackson and the original Lord of the Rings trilogy and The Hobbit are all bad, right? We saw that in the second video where they had other uh, famous directors, Steven Sonnenberg, um, David Fincher, um, Peter Weir, come out and criticize Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings. We saw that in the other video where, you know, they said that, oh, Tolkien would be looking at Warner, he would view Warner Brothers the same way he viewed his villains, okay, but they just distinctly left rings of pewter out of that discussion right that's been the recurring theme for every single video i've put out today and all of these articles that i've referenced came out within the past 72 hours right so within hours of each other we got all of these articles right and that goes to show the point that i've been trying to make you know when people say hey listen the rings of of pewter you know, season one was done in the middle of October. Why are you still so t talking about it and still so focused on it? And it's because exactly this, because I knew this was coming, okay? That there's going to be this ever-present need to get out content on, on the shill media's behalf to prop up this show. And you're going to see it get worse as we get closer to the release of season two. OK, and as I mentioned in one of the previous videos, what you're going to see happen is you're going to see things like this. Warner Brothers will make an announcement. Oh, hey, we just announced we inked a deal with Peter Jackson and, and Fran Walsh and Philippa Boyens to work on the new Lord of the Rings films that we're thinking about doing. Right. Well, then you will see more articles like this come out. How, you know, Warner Brothers shouldn't do it. They, they got it right the first time going back would be, you know, just too risky or flat out just saying the rings of pewter is just better because it's better um or or other directors are saying oh peter jackson you know he's he's not really a good director and stuff like that and and you're gonna see that continue until until we get the first teaser trailer for season two of rings of pewter then you'll see the big pivot
And the big pivot will be them going back and repeating what we saw last time, which is when the fans come out and have a reaction to that teaser trailer for season two. Okay, you're going to see Amazon and the shill media once again whip out the istophobe arguments and it's all misogyny and it's all, you know, white fragi fragility and it's all, you know, um, fantasy's always been too white and, um, you know, you don't like seeing strong, powerful women and, and all that garbage and all that nonsense. And then they'll complain about review bombing and ratioing the trailers and so on and so forth. Um, just like they did with the first with the first season. Right. But until then, until we get to that point in the marketing campaign for season two of Rings of uh, Pewter kicks in, what, you, what we're going to get is this. We're going to get the death by a thousand cuts. We're going to get the miraculously there just happens to be a dozen articles that come out knocking warner brothers and peter jackson for daring to want to make more lord of the Rings stuff when amazon's already doing it right and just miraculously all these you know whether it was movie web whether it's collider whether it's screen rant whether it's cbr.com or whether it's start effects all within the same 72 hour period writing essentially the same thing rings of pewter good warner brothers new movies even though they haven't even decided what they're going to be about yet are already deemed bad right and that's been the recurring theme and i wanted to show that today because you know it's just this is what i knew was going to happen this is what i've always been saying is going to be the tactic and we're going to see more of it this isn't going to be the only time it happens there will be more of it and I will be here calling that shit out because that's what it is. Because people like Robert Pittman and Screen Rant um, who have biases, they, they don't care about whether or not it's a good adaptation. They care about whether or not it's, quote unquote, the right adaptation. OK, they're not interested in honoring Tolkien's work and, and, and doing it justice. They're interested in um, lining their pockets and promoting their form of justice, whatever that may be. OK, so let's not let's not let's not fall for this. And that's why I continue to make these videos about this stuff and calling this shit out whenever I see it. And I, I, I'll continue to do so as long as you guys want to, you know, stick around and watch me rant and rave and get involved in the discussion, because this is the type of stuff that we have to push back on. OK, um, just like, you know, Gandalf says, it's the little things, the little everyday deeds of good that hold back the evil. Well, we have to be the little folk. We have to be the ones that through everyday deeds of pushing back against this nonsense, um, we hold back the evil um, that is them trying to essentially on screen rewrite Tolkien. OK. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not about letting it happen. And I hope that you guys will and gals will join me on uh, in this quest to the Black Gate. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. This will be the last video for today, but I just wanted to get that out there. So um, if you haven't, check out the other videos that came out today. Like I said, you'll see the progression as I go through the whole thing. Um, again, this this isn't all by chance. These things are very well, all these people talk, all these people are on private chat groups and stuff. You know, you always see that, you know, it comes out that, oh yeah, well this reporter was talking with that reporter on Twitter and in DMs and so on and so forth. And they have these conventions and these meetups. These people coordinate their shit. So if you think that all of the articles I spoke about today just randomly happened to come out within the same 72 hour period, um, I've got a bridge to Brooklyn to sell you because it, that is not how it works. Okay. So anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. If you like the video, then like the video. If you want to share the video, by all means do so. It helps us with the YouTube algorithm and we can always use help with the YouTube algorithm. YouTube algorithm doesn't like me much. I don't know what it is. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just the nature of the way things are. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping to expand and get out there more. And I hope that you guys and gals will help me do so. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider turning that subscribe button gray by subscribing. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. Um, you know, it, it, it just helps the channel out. It helps it get seen by more people. It helps us get us out, 
get it out there and it helps get the word out it helps get the word out for things like this that would normally fly under the radar and trust me these organizations are hoping that it flies under your radar but that you pay just enough attention to be like well yeah i guess i guess the re original trilogies weren't really that great now that i think about it Th that's what they're hoping for again it's the death by a thousand cuts they're not just going to come out here and and go full bore at peter jackson's trilogy they know they can't do that so what they'll do is they'll chop it down slowly They'll chop it down slowly and they'll target a young generation who may not have seen those movies initially, who, who were born after those movies came out, right? You know, the, you, you folks that are in your late teens and stuff like that, you know, early 20s, um, who may have just been a newborn when these, when Peter Jackson's movies came out um, and don't fully, weren't, couldn't fully get the impact that they made. Um, as far as Tolkien fans go, that, that's who these articles are aimed at because they're trying to win you over. They're trying to win you over so that when you think of Lord of the Rings, when you think of J.R.R. Tolkien, what you envision in your head is Rings of Pewter. They don't want you envisioning Peter Jackson's movies or the books, God forbid. They, they want you envisioning Rings of Pewter. Okay. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll be here to try and, you know, act like a Gandalf or act like an Elrond and tr sort of guide you guys in the old ways and let you know, um, exactly how crappy this show that Amazon is putting out is. Anyway, folks, that's going to do it for me. I will, uh, talk to you again, probably tomorrow. All right. Until then, remember to be good, be safe, be awesome, but more importantly, stay more dorkish. All right, guys. Peace. Peace.